The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Um, good evening. Welcome to all of you. Um, Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas to you all. And uh, you know, this, the story of Christmas is the story of how God comes to us, right? And I know that the promise is that even if there are only two or three, <laughs> um, he still comes. God still comes. God is here with us now. That's what we are celebrating, is the beginning of that time when, when God came in, in Jesus. And we know that there are people watching at home as well. We wish you a, a very happy Christmas as well. Let's begin with our opening hymn. Let us pray. God of glory, your splendor shines from a manger in Bethlehem, where the light of the world is humbly born into the darkness of human night. Open our eyes to Christ's presence in the shadows of our world, so that we, like him, may become beacons of your love, your light, and your justice, particularly for those for whom there is no room. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Christ child. Amen. Amen. 
A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you. As with joy at the harvest, as the people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden, and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian, for all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for fire. For a child has born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace from the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Tim and I will now read Psalm 96 responsibly, whole verse by whole verse. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the heaven, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols, but you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Majesty and magnificence are in your presence. Power and splendor are in your sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord your families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due the holy name. Bring offerings and enter the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in beauty of wholeness, holiness. Tremble before the Lord all the earth. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is King. The one who made the world so firm that it cannot be moved will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy at your coming, O Lord, for you come to judge the earth. You will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with your truth. The second reading comes from Titus, a reading from Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. While we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, he it is who gave us himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So again, I wish you a Merry Christmas. It's Christmas Eve, and here we are. We just heard the well-known story of Jesus' birth, of Jesus coming into the world as, as God with us, Emmanuel. Hearing again the story of hope, which breaks into the least likely of places. And no matter how many times we've heard it, no matter how many Christmas Eve services we've gone to, the Christmas story is always good news, gospel, good news that we need to hear. And I think this year, maybe more than other years, we need to hear some good news. We need to hear about hope that comes into our world, hope that comes into our lives, We need to hear that darkness and disease doesn't have the last word. We need to hear about Jesus. In him, God is with us, Emmanuel. And this Jesus comes and he's born in a dirty, smelly stable to remind us that God is with us in the dirt and muck that we live in from day to day. God is present with us here, Emmanuel. This year, as we've experienced another year of the pandemic, and it seems to be getting worse again, our hearts have always been together, even though we have had to be physically apart. We've all been affected deeply, and it goes on and on. And especially, I can't help but think of the poor, and the homeless, and the elderly, and those suffering with physical and mental health issues, and frontline workers, and low-wage workers, who have especially suffered and continue to suffer during this pandemic. We have been in an extended season of waiting, sometimes feeling hopeful and sometimes feeling hopeless. But we always need to hear this good news of God's mercy and love that is here with us. On this Christmas Eve, we come out of the waiting, so to speak, to celebrate God's presence with us in that baby born so long ago. 
I want to especially focus a bit on the shepherds in this text that I just read. There they are, quietly minding their own business, quietly doing their daily work, and it says all of a sudden they were surrounded by angels. And you know, in the Bible, every time an angel appears, the first thing that the angels always say is, don't be afraid, which of course means that the people who are witnessing, witnessing and experiencing these visits from angels are absolutely terrified. It's a scary thing. Can you imagine it? One minute the shepherds are there with their quiet sheep, you know, who are making a little bit of noise, baby, or something. And the next minute they're, they're absolutely seized with panic and quaking in terror. And yet this moment, too, shows us the grace and love and beauty of God. The paradox that God, who created everything, who is the Lord and giver of life, this God, who is coming to earth, announces his presence by going out to a field and finding some shepherds. And then the shepherds become the first ones in history who hear the good news that God has come to be with us in our world, in the infant Jesus. The shepherds. You know, the angels could have gone into Jerusalem, they could have gone to the main square or the, big, the nearest cities or the houses of the rich and famous. I'm sure they could have announced this news to a great many more people, much more efficiently. They could have turned it into a big media event. But the story tells us that God first sent word, the announcement of the coming of Jesus to these humble people, to these shepherds out in the field, stinking and smelling of ripe manure from tending those animals. God's word announces the light and hope of the world to such a small, inconspicuous group of humble, ordinary working people, just shepherds. And after the angels announce the birth of Jesus to the shepherds, something happens next that we don't think about sometimes. We focus maybe on the angels and the angels singing up in the heavens and so on. But we we should think about also the response of the shepherds. There they were out in the field, and from one minute to the next, they were terrified. And yet, despite their fear, they decided right away that they were going to go to Bethlehem. And they actually wanted to go and see this baby that the angels have just told them about. I wonder what that conversation was like among the shepherds, you know? Did they all just say, oh, we got to go? Was there a kind of consensus? Did one, one of the shepherds think, oh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to talk everybody, self, everybody else into it because he really wanted to go? Maybe they just all knew in their hearts that they had to go. And then they go. They go right now. Like right now, they go. What about us? How do we respond when we get invitations from God? We, of course, don't get invitations like a multitude of the heavenly host announcing to us the birth of Christ, but we receive invitations all the time in our lives. Invitations to follow, to come, and to see. Invitations to love our neighbors deeply and practically, to practice blessing our enemies, and to spend time with God each day in prayer and worship. How do we respond? To those invitations. In the shepherd's response, going to Bethlehem and visiting Mary, the effect of what the angels had done was multiplied. The effect of the angels' visit was multiplied. The shepherds go on and they start telling the story to everybody who will listen about this baby that was announced to them and now they've seen. And they speak words that are so important that it says that Mary heard them and treasured and pondered them in her heart. Today on Christmas Eve, the shepherds remind us that the invitations God sends us are always to be multiplied and increased and shared. These unassuming shepherds sitting in the fields and minding their sheep are suddenly surrounded by an angelic light. The birth of the Savior is announced to them and their hearts and lives are transformed. So as we hear the words of this Christmas story, I suggest that we could pay attention to the less showy element of the story. Allow those shepherds, those lowly background working men, to teach you something new about who God is and to whom God pays attention. 
Allow them to speak to you about transformation and increasing joy as we spread the word. This year, we remember God sees these humble ones and gives them a voice, a role in the story of God coming to us as one of us in Jesus. And if God, and if God sees and uses even shepherds, then surely God sees and uses us as well. Amen. Let us sing our next hymn. Wonderful counselor, whose glory is beyond our understanding and whose love is beyond measure. Let us know your presence now. Mighty God, with these power girds creation, whose cradled hands cradled the hills, yet whose mercy is boundless, be present to us now. Prince of peace, whose, whose righteousness is like the strong mountains and whose justice is as the great deep opened our hearts to you. Emmanuel, who desires it, all, it is always to have mercy, and whose arm is yearning to save, we lift before you now. All churches worldwide, that they may give bright witness to your grace and love. Leaders of nations, that they may exercise justice for the lowly and the least. And for those who suffer in physical illness or mental, emotional, and spiritual weariness, that they may experience moments of hope, renewal, and healing. 
Especially, we pray for all those suffering under the ravages of the pandemic and those who asked with giving medical treatment. Hold, hold all those we pray for and love in your unbounded bounded love. Make us your he healing presence in the world. Loving word of God, you have shown us the fullness of your glory. In taking human flesh, fill us in our body, bodily life, with your grace and truth, that our joy may be boundless and our integrity complete. We pray in the name of Jesus, born to us, for us, in us, and for all. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples in whatever language or version you prefer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. Go in peace, rejoice in Christ our Savior. Thanks be to God. Now we'll have our candle lighting ceremony.